Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this past week was filled with news about the upcoming Series 7 Apple Watch, iPad Mini that could be redesigned soon, as well as iPhone 13, iOS 15, and all of that news, as well as some product releases that Apple released earlier this week, and much more, such as the M1X MacBook. This is your news update for the week of June 13th, 2021. And the first thing is products that we knew were going to launch pretty soon. The first one is the Beats Studio Buds. This was first seen in the code of iOS 14.6, and they're now available. So they're noise canceling, and it says noise canceling, music enhancing on the Apple Store here. You can see they come in white, red, or black, and they're $149.99. They're available now. They're noise canceling, like I said. And if you prefer the sound of Beats over AirPods, for example, they are cheaper than AirPods Pro. But if you prefer these, they're available right now. Now, the next thing is Apple also put on the Apple store, their new cases. There's the summer 2021 cases. I did a video about them the other day and they come in three different colors. You have electric orange, sunflower and cloud blue. And like I said, I did a video on this the other day as well, and they're available now they're $49 each. Now also Apple is updating iCloud mail on the web. So if you use mail on your phone and maybe you want to use your iCloud account on the internet, it's now available in a new design. It looks a little bit refreshed and a little bit nicer. Also, they launched podcast subscriptions that's available now. And if you use Apple podcasts, you can go to certain podcasts that you might follow. This is the LA times, and you'll see that you can try it free three days for free or nine 99 a month. So this was the first one I was able to find with a subscription. It's not for everyone and not all podcasts will have this option, but some podcasts, maybe they want to go that route instead of possibly having an advertisement within their podcast. So it's up to them, of course, and that's available now. And then you can manage them as well if you have those in your library. So you now have the option for podcast subscriptions. Now, the next generation Apple Watch or the Series 7 Apple Watch is, is expected to launch alongside the iPhone 13, usually around September, late September, and we can expect it around then. Now, the Series 7 Apple Watch I talked about a couple weeks ago where it's said to be a little bit more squared off, according to John Prosser, and based on these renders from Renders by Ian, it looks like it could be squared off like this, as well as, according now to Mark Gurman, have a thinner display border. So the bezel around the border could get smaller, as well as having an updated display, a faster system on the chip processor, as well as improved connectivity with ultra wideband, so we could better locate devices such as air tags, for example, or things we've lost. So all of those things are said to be coming to the series seven Apple watch. Now, unfortunately, at least according to Mark Gurman, there were a couple sensors that we were hoping for this year that it doesn't seem will make it. And that is a body temperature sensor as well as blood glucose. So that could be coming in 2022 instead. And unfortunately we don't have those yet. However, a blood glucose sensor could be revolutionary for those that need to check their glucose level regularly. No longer would you have to wear a patch or, or stick your finger to check your blood glucose level. Hopefully we'll be able to do that with sensors in the future. And I think that would be revolutionary for a lot of people. So hopefully we'll see something like that in the future, but it looks like it may not be until at least 2022. Also, we could see a more rugged version of the Apple watch in 2022, according to Mark Gurman, and also a new Apple watch SE around that time frame as well. So those things could be coming to the next generation Apple watch. Now, iOS 15 at this point has been out for a little over a week and I've been using it on my main device and it definitely has some bugs, but a lot of you want to know when will beta two come out and when will the public beta come out? I've been asked this almost every single day, multiple times since the release of beta one. And if we look back at what Apple Apple has done with previous betas of iOS 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Generally, they wait at least two weeks until the next beta would be out. That means that beta two will most launch, will most likely launch on the 21st of June, sometime around that point, maybe a couple days after, but normally within about two weeks, then we'll see the public beta either that day or the following day, or they could wait until beta three, depending on how stable it is. It just depends on the year. So they could wait until beta two or beta three for the public beta. If they feel it's stable, 
based on what they've said, since it's coming in July, I think that's more likely on beta three, which again would be two weeks out from that. So July 5th, for example. So that seems more likely, although Apple has been known to change this up and release public betas early as well. So hopefully we'll see that if it contains a much more stable code base, for example. Also with iOS 14.7, people are saying, why are, why is Apple still making iOS 14? Well, every year they continue to make the current version of iOS until the public release of the next version, which is in September. Generally late September is when we should see iOS 15. So we can expect iOS 15 sometime probably in the third week or fourth week of September and Apple will continue to make iOS 14 versions and beta versions up until that point with security updates and maybe a few new features or tweaks as well. Now the next generation iPad mini is said to be in the works and coming later this year, according to Mark Gurman and John Prosser, which have both said that the iPad mini will look similar to the iPad air and the iPad pro, although closer to the iPad pro, air in that it will have touch ID instead of face ID. So you'll have a touch ID button with better speakers, USB C, and it's said to be coming in black, silver, and gold. So we can expect those later this year. It seems like we really expected an iPad mini to launch alongside the iPad pro, but maybe they just couldn't get the chipset ready in time. So I would expect that a little bit later. Now, as far as the upcoming iPhone, iPhone 13 is of course in the works and starting production if it hasn't already. And Apple has registered the iPhone 13 models in the Eurasian database. This is very typical be before a new product launches, usually a couple months or a few months before they'll register it in the database. And we're seeing that show up now it's showing with iOS 14, but I would imagine iOS 15 will ship with it. Of course, like they do every year with the following version, but they do have to register it for just like we see with the FCC, for example. So it's getting ready to go. Of course. Now iPhone 13 is said to have a better camera system as well with sensor shift stabilization. Like we get in the iPhone 12 pro max on some of, or one of the sensors. Apple is apparently asked for their supplier to increase the capacity by 30 to 40% to meet demand since they might be shifting to a new supplier for all of their cameras, since they're going to use sensor shift in more cameras this year. Some people are saying this may cause a problem to other manufacturers of phones that want similar camera sensors or sort of setups, but it seems like Apple just is getting everything ready to launch their iPhone 13 at a normal time this year, as opposed to last year. So we expect all the same things, a better camera, a different camera bump, a very similar design since this was the new design last year with the iPhone 12 series, as well as a faster display, a pro motion display at 120 Hertz. Those will be the big things. Things I would like to see is maybe USB C, although that's very unlikely as well as maybe even faster charging. And it's said to have a smaller notch, like most people are suspecting based on glass that has leaked for it. So all of those things seem to be ready to go and be in the start of manufacturing, at least they have to get millions ready before the launch. Now, Apple has been talking about this past week with WWDC about getting rid of passwords or eliminating passwords altogether by using face ID or touch ID. Other people have been working on this as well. And I think that's a great thing if we can do that with biometrics and make it easier for us to log in and more secure since it would use the secure enclave enclave on the phone to store that information. No one else would have it. And then it would be available just to log in with your device. Now it looks like they're getting things set up to do that. And what you would do is set a password. It stores it in a web authentication credential called a passkey with keychain. And for now it only works with Apple devices. However, I think we'll see a larger rollout of this in the future where it would be much more secure and tied to biometrics instead of just a password that could be found out later on, or maybe manipulated by someone else, or maybe you accidentally just give it to someone and they shouldn't have it by going to an email and then tapping a link that you shouldn't. So those sorts of things with phishing scams and things hopefully will go away. We'll have more secure logins and some people like Microsoft are working on this as well, as well as Google. So I think we'll see this in the future where things will get more secure, whether it mean with an iPhone an iPad or an Apple watch or your Mac as well with touch ID. So all of those things could be coming very soon. Now, another thing Apple talked about is AirPods. Apparently we'll be able to update AirPods firmware 
for developers, meaning we'll have pre-release firmware coming to AirPods in the future. Now, how this will actually work is hard to say, but by going to settings and then you generally go to general and software update, maybe we'll have an option for AirPods as well. This would be really nice to have a new option to update your firmware on your AirPods, not just for developers, but for everyone in general, where you would be able to finally update it without having to plug it in and sort of hope they update and just wait for it. It would be great to have a button and hopefully we'll see more like this very soon with whatever they have planned for it. So we don't really know a whole lot of details until they roll this out. But as soon as we know what's in the new firmware, of course, I'll share that with you as well. So maybe we'll see some new features that they haven't launched yet. Now at WWDC this year, quite a few people were disappointed, including myself, that Apple didn't show off a new pro chipset level of their Apple Silicon. Many of us expected an updated MacBook where they would show maybe a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro with updated M1X chipset inside. So the next level or the pro version of their new Apple Silicon. And it looks like Apple may have planned on announcing it and just didn't. And this is based off them uploading their WWDC keynote to YouTube. And when you do that, you can choose keywords or tags that reference what you're talking about within that video. Apple apparently referenced a MacBook M1X or an M1X Apple Silicon chip within those tags on YouTube. And because they did that, that makes many think that they were ready to announce it and just decided not to at the last minute. According to DigiTimes, this could be due to a delay or a shortage of mini LED displays being manufactured right now. So there could be a shortage where Apple just wasn't able to provide the quantity they needed to push out this new MacBook. And instead, according to DigiTimes, it would start shipping at the beginning of the third quarter, which isn't too far away. That's actually July. So it could start in July where we could see these new MacBooks. Although again, we'll have to wait and see, but if we're waiting on the display technology, I would rather have it right and have things built well than sort of rushed out. So it makes sense if that's what they're doing, but I can't wait to see what they have for the next level. Also in the latest version of Xcode 13, Apple has referenced a new Mac pro with Intel CPUs. Now it's said that there could be some Intel CPU updates to the Mac pro, as well as an Apple Silicon version of the Mac pro where it would be a smaller Mac. So we could see something like that. It's in Xcode. We just haven't seen it physically yet. Now, finally, we're waiting for Apple to release a VR headset. Many people have said that Apple's working on a VR headset. Mark Gurman, Ming Chi Kuo, and many others have been talking about it for a long time. And we're waiting for that as well as Apple Glass. According to Kuo Ming Chi or Ming Chi Kuo, we can expect the second quarter of 2022 to maybe see. Apple's VR headset. And that makes sense. If we're going to see it at WWDC 2022, people would maybe be back in person to be able to get their hands on it and experience exactly what that's about. So I can't wait to see what it is, but it looks like we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that. Apple is also working on an Apple car still. They've hired a former BMW executive and self-driving founder at Canoe, Ulrich Kranz, to work on this apparently. And they're also in talks with a battery maker in China for an EV as well. So it looks like Apple still may be going forward with different EVs or whatever they have planned with an Apple car, but it's still in the works and probably quite some time away, or we won't see it for many, many years, if ever. And so that's everything this past week. There's been a ton of news, of course, with iOS 15, there's a bunch of features in that, and I'll be covering more of those in the future videos as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>